Okay, hi, now welcome to this, uh, my next video in my series of circuits. And in this video, we're going to speak about voltage, current, and resistance, right? We've mentioned those terms in previous videos, but we're going to expand on them uh, and make sure that you know actually what each one is in a circuit. And eventually, you're going to use those in order to calculate things uh, using circuit diagrams, okay? So, first of all, let's go down and have a look at a simple circuit diagram all right now you've already seen the components uh listed in my previous video if you haven't seen that then please do go and have a look however what we have here is our power supply in this case that's just a cell and here in green we have the ammeter okay and here in red we have our voltmeter all right, the ammeter is actually going to measure your current through your circuit, wherever that's placed. The voltmeter will measure the voltage or the potential difference across any component, right? And this component here, you should know, is a bulb or a filament bulb. Okay, so first of all, uh, what is the voltage? Because we're, we're told that the voltage basically um, is a force which is pushing electrons through the circuit, right? It's a good way of thinking about it, but it's not um, its not the most correct definition. Now, the voltage, what the voltage actually means, okay, so the voltage, let me just, I'll get rid of that for now, so we have room. The voltage is the amount of energy, amount of energy per unit charge. All right, and what does that actually mean? Well, it's physically the amount of energy that your electrons have as they're going through the circuit, right? Because you could have electrons flowing through a circuit, um, but if the, uh, you had loads of electrons, but they didn't have a lot of energy, then you're not going to be able to do a lot of work with them, all right? Whereas if you increase the voltage, each of those electrons now has more energy, right? And therefore, they are able to do more work. You're able to power um, a higher a higher energy requiring uh, component, whatever that might be, uh, that's why you need a higher voltage because each um, each electron actually has more energy than it would with a low voltage. Okay, and that's what the voltage means. And therefore, we can actually write uh, another equation in terms of voltage, right? So volts or your voltage is equal to the work done, okay? Because that's energy transferred, right? So your energy uh, in your electrons is going to be used to do something else. For example, if we have a look down here at the bulb, okay, electrons come in this way, okay, and when they enter the bulb, they actually transfer energy to the bulb, because the electrons have energy, the bulb wants to do something, in, um, in this case it's light up, and so they transfer energy to allow it to do that, okay, and now when the electrons have left, now they have less energy because they've given the energy to the bulb, and what happens is the voltmeter reads that, uh, that difference in energy, and that's why um, voltage is sometimes called potential difference, right? Because it's a difference in energy from the start to the finish. Okay, so that's the work done is the amount of energy transferred, okay, divided by the charge. Yeah, remember we said amount of energy per unit charge. Well, work done, okay, is the amount of energy transferred, and Q stands for charge. Work done is obviously in joules, okay, because it's energy, and charge we said was in coulombs, okay, it's a, it's a um, unit of charge that we can deal with, okay, and that's equal to volts, right, so that means that one volt is equal to one joule per coulomb, okay, and that's another definition for your voltage, all right, so next we'll look at resistance, okay, so if I get rid of this stuff here, now resistance, uh, we spoke about before, resistance is uh, how the electrons are being resisted moving through whatever it is they're moving through. For example, let's take our bulb analogy again. Okay, so the electrons are moving through here, and then when they get into the bulb, okay, the bulb is going to have um, heated up when it's lit up. Okay, and the metal filament in the bulb, which lights up, is going to be hot, which means that there are metal ions inside which are vibrating. Those vibrating metal ions get in the way of the electrons and make it harder for those electrons to move through the bulb, okay? That means that they are providing resistance. If you're impeding the flow of electrons, then that is resistance, okay? And as temperature increases, 
resistance increases for that exact reason that metal ions are vibrating and getting in the way of the electrons. Okay, so resistance really is um, pushing against the flow of electrons, if you like. Okay, and there's an equation that we can use for that, and it all comes from, and I always like to relate it back to the original, that voltage is equal to current times by resistance. All right. Now, if you rearrange that by dividing both sides by the current, yep, so I divide this side by current and divide this side, therefore, by current as well, yep, then I get voltage divided by current is equal to the resistance, all right? So your resistance in ohms is equal to your voltage, obviously, in volts, divided by your current in amps, all right? And that's a really important uh, equation. Uh, to be able to use. All right, now I'll explore that relationship even further on my next video where we look at um, current and potential difference graphs, okay? And this is where people really do struggle. And we'll explore this relationship further. However, for now, I'm just gonna leave you with a question uh, in which we're gonna use this formula. All right, so you'll notice that the numbers have changed. We now have a value uh, for the reading on the ammeter and a value for the reading on the voltmeter, okay? So in this total circuit, <clears throat> we, the only component we have is the bulb, right? This is quite, these numbers aren't overly realistic, okay? Because bulbs don't normally have this high resistance, but it's good to show um, what's happening. So we have a five amp current going through this entire circuit, right? This is a series circuit, which means that that current is going to be constant throughout the whole thing. And the only component we have is the bulb, and that has a potential difference across it, or a voltage, of 20 volts, all right? And so what I want to work out is the resistance of the bulb. Okay, so I want to work out resistance of the bulb, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my equation and that is voltage is equal to current times by resistance. And now I'm gonna put in the numbers. And my voltage, okay, was 20 volts, which is equal to my current of five amps times by my resistance, okay? In your working out, you don't have to put these units, by the way. I just did it so that you know exactly where these numbers are coming from. And now to get the resistance, obviously we've divide both sides by the current. So divide this by five and divide this one by five. And I'll get 20 over five is therefore equal to my resistance, all right? And therefore resistance is equal to 20 divided by five is four. And my units, which I need in my answer, um, are ohms, okay? So my resistance through that bulb is four ohms. And that's the question done. All right, and so that was quite brief. I'm going to stop there. Uh, in the next video, we're going to look in more detail at the um, current and potential difference graphs, okay, and how that relates to resistance. That's a topic that people do struggle with, so make sure you do watch that one. Uh, but if you've got any questions on what came up in this video, please do feel free to send me a direct email uh, using the link or post a comment in the box, and I'll be sure to get back to you. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video.